Hello and welcome to this first episode of looking at Unreal Editor for Fortnite. This is a brand new tool just released and I thought we'd take it out for a little first look at how uh, it works and what we've got inside of it and what we can and can't do with the Unreal Editor. So let's take a quick look at the editor. So here we are inside of Unreal Editor for Fortnite and as you can see it looks very similar to Unreal Engine 5 with a few key differences. First thing you'll notice is that's a lot slimmed down. So you don't have all that much stuff like going up here, got some new things such as first and the project settings over here too. And ultimately it's just a slimmer down version of Unreal Engine 5. So if you've been using Unreal Engine 5, you should be quite familiar with this layout and look. Um, so it's just a matter of getting used to what's here and what's not here. So here I've got a blank uh, new project using the, I think it's Tilted Towers. I'm not a big Fortnite player, so I don't really know. But um, this is a new map they provide for you. There's quite a number of maps you can choose from to start with and explore. Um, but here we are, we can fly around using our WASD just like we do inside Unreal Engine 5. So let's take a look around and see what we've got going on that's different up here. Now the main thing that's immediately different for me was this top bar at top here. Uh, you can see here, the selection mode here has got a lot less options than what you're used to in Unreal 5. You've got the selection mode, landscape mode, modeling, and animation. In the projects here, in here, we've got project settings access. We can open and close projects, open new files, share a team, publish it, and open the creator portal to share it to the public. So that's really interesting stuff we could do there too. On this add menu here, it's all similar stuff if you've been using Unreal 5, or again, very slimmed down. But you also have access to the new Fab Store. The Fab Store is a brand new store that they're bringing into Unreal uh, 5 nat natively later this year. But as it's part of this in alpha format. And basically it's a giant repository of assets that you can get hold of, buy and add to your library and add to your scenes. So here we've got our Quixel Mega Scans, 3D models and some packs that have been provided as well. So I should be able to, without prior testing to this, be able to click and drag this out into my scene and it'll update and download that file for me to use. And there you go, it's downloading it, ready for me to use and adding it to my scene. Super simple, super quick to get things going. And it feels like that's the whole motto of this Unreal Editor, to be super quick and simple to get things up and running. So we can do that all day long by adding new content from the Fab Alpha store. And you've got access to lots of items in here got loads of filtering options and you got access to your library and mark purchases so this is obviously alpha so do be aware that it may be a bit uh feature light and uh may have some bugs in it still but for the most part i'm pretty happy with it okay so that's not too bad so we can easily add new assets such as that uh if i wanted to actually test and play the game we can launch a session so we're going to click this and we'll, yep we'll save and we'll prepare and launch the game session. As you can see, when launching a game, it comes up as a Fortnite game. Basically, that's what you're doing when you're loading this up. It's like natively built inside of Fortnite's own engine. And so when we launch in here, it should connect and show us into our level. And we be able to, should be able to explore around that. And then it'll go eventually into loading into your edit session. Now, this is just another session that other people can join uh, as friends from other devices like a PlayStation or Xbox or something. Um, but we should be able to access to our content. So it's a bit slower than running a game like natively inside Unreal Engine 5 because it's got to load up Fortnite and then basically it's downloading the content to that Fortnite uh, client. So that's what it's doing right now, is downloading the map that I've just pushed play on. I haven't done anything to the map, I've just left it and pushed play. Uh, but it still has to download it as its own session. Uh, this is solely because we will need people to be able to join our session and therefore they can also download the map too. So let's wait for that to finish doing that. And there we are, we're inside our map now in the game. And it's using the default Fortnite stuff, so you've got your character and so forth. And there you go. Now, what's really neat about this is a lot of the work is done for you. So you don't have to make right about doing running or character movement or anything like that. You just take whatever Fortnite's given you by default here. And by the looks of it as well, if I just get over here, 
I'll work out what I'm going to take myself around. I think I'm this way around. So inside the editor, we can actually copy items from here into the slot that we want. Like, we can put this truck here, and I can spawn another one in and place it wherever I want to place it. Yeah, which is really cool. You right click, by the way, to uh, dis deselect it. So even when you're playing a game on your console, <clears throat> or in this case, PC, I'm playing on, I assume it would work the same as console, we can find other assets like this and copy them too, just by picking a number key in this case from PC. So we can aim at this sign, push two, and now I can place more of these signs everywhere. Which is really cool. Now let's go back over to Unreal, uh, the Unreal Editor. And in Unreal Editor, we can see that truck that I placed in game is here, as well as all the signposts. So really cool that we've got access to a two-way relationship here because the console or the client here can communicate to the editor and the editor can also communicate to the client. Because if I want to, say, turn this around like this and I go back to the game, you can see the change has happened immediately. So through some really cool collaboration things, you can have a lot of fun with your friends playing whilst you're editing and making the map. You can imagine that's a whole game in and of itself. Very much like the Forge sort of multiplayer you'd get in like Halo. It reminds me a lot of that. Um, but yeah, so we can do stuff like this in here. So let's come out of here and exit uh, Island. And exit Fortnite as well. So back in the editor, uh, we've, all our changes are still here from the live session we had with our client, and we can delete them, move them about as much as we like, and so forth. But we have access to many other settings on here too, because we have access to all of these settings regarding each item they've given us here. So we can change things such as the uh, graphics, such as the uh, materials they're using, uh, whether the instance is using a mirrored option to it or not. Uh, you can do all sorts of cool, crazy things with it. Uh, I've got alarms and bounce systems on it, so we can bounce on top of it and things. Uh, so really neat that we can do all that stuff in here. So what else is new in here? Well, Verse is new. Verse is the new programming language they've developed for this, so you can code in specific things. Now, I this is brand new, so I'm gonna get take my time and get used to using Verse. Um, as you can see, we need to require Visual Studio. Click yes, uh, it should be installing a new update for this so we go in here it's going to ask to install visual studio code yep 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 i'll just continue to finish that and that will allow us to code in our own behaviors for particular objects in here so what else can we do whilst we're waiting for that to finish well let's take a look around so much like unreal engine 5 we have a content drawer and in that content drawer if you go to all folders we can see we've got access to our content in this folder First look content, because I'll name a project first look. Uh, we've got epic content. We've got Fortnite content, which we'll take a deeper dive into in a second. And we've got reference content. So let's take a look at our Fortnite content. And this is where you'll find all your meshes and blueprints, or not blueprints, but actors that you want to use inside your scene. So here you've got loads of different devices we want to add into this. So let's take in, uh, let's go and put in an accolade in. So here I can place an accolade into the scene. I can name it and give it an XP reward of how much it's going to give me, as well as some other advanced options here too. I can change the icon, I can change how it's triggered, whether it's for a particular team. I can do all sorts of cool stuff like that. And let's take a look at what else we've got in here too. So if we go into the, let's say, uh, crash pad. Go there. We can place this in the scene. And if I want to edit its code, I can go over to its side here and convert it to a reusable blueprint that I can add into my scene here. And I can add, edit it to use my own code as well. And that'll bring up our device there. Now, obviously, this scene is, again, very slimmed down. We don't have all the options we're usually used to. We don't have, like, variable lists. We don't have 
um, uh, event graphs, nothing like that, because it does not use blueprinting. It uses this first language instead. So back in the editor, let's take a look around and see what else we have available to us. Now, each item that you find inside your scene already from Fortnite has loads of settings that you can tweak and change on it. So I can click on this door and window, for example, and in the details panel, I can see some options about how the door works and how it opens and slides and so forth. So I can really mess about with those things there too. And that's different per item I click on. Okay, and I get different behavior for each one. So if you want to look around at what content you have available to you, you have the content drawer. The content drawer has four folders in it. It has the epic content, your content, which is the, named after your project, Fortnite's content, and reference content. Let's take a look at Fortnite's content and see what they've given us here. So I can see here we've got some consumables. And you can see all these different things here that we can drag into our scene if we want. So there's the little mushroom consumable. And it's, again, it's got its own options around here, like we showed on other things. Each of these items has their own settings. But let's go talk about if you want to make your own. Okay, well, let's go back to our folder. First up content. And go to add and choose blueprint class. Now, when you open this up, you're going to see it's a lot more simplified. We have building prop or building static mesh. We'll go for a prop. And we'll just name it like that and open it up. Now, in here, we can give it a static mesh and you can use any mesh we like. We can use one of our own, whatever we want here. And we're going to hit compile and save that. But as you can see inside the editor here, there is no event graph, there's no variables, there's nothing at all. It's just component-based editing here. So if I close that now, I can now add this to a building into my scene, like so. And you can see down here, I have the same settings that we have for attaching it to buildings. So here we've got building attachment slot, what type of slot it goes onto, a floor, a wall, or ceiling slot. So I say a wall slot here. And building attachment type, we go attach to the wall. And we can attach it to this wall here uh, by attaching it to our object. So if that wall gets destroyed, that would get destroyed as well. So that's how they are making things like that inside Fortnite. So you can do like lamp sconces and things like that, make things to get destroyed as you're building them. So it's a really nice little neat way of doing that. You've got a few things like allowing weak spots on the item too, and other things like that as well. And there we go, a nice quick look at the editor. And you can see it's got a lot of similarities, yet a lot of differences between Unreal Engine 5. It's not going to be a replacement, so don't worry about that. But it is something that has got a lot of potential in what it can actually do and for also allow people who've never made games before to create their own content and publish it, which is really exciting to see. You can expect to see more videos about Unreal Editor for Fortnite coming soon. And I hope to release them on a regular schedule to especially talk about Burst and its programming language. Now, if you like what I'm trying to do here, you can check it out early access stuff on patreon.com forward slash Ryan Laley, where your donation of just $1 gets you access to all of my videos, Unreal Engine 5, and Unreal Editor for Fortnite, before everyone else. So you can sign up now and get access to some new content for Unreal Engine 5, and coming very, very soon, Unreal Editor for Fortnite content too. Thanks very much for watching. Make sure you subscribe to the channel, and I'll see you all next time. Thanks, everyone. Bye.